Good evening, everybody. It's good to be back with you tonight here on Wednesday night, and thank you for tuning in on Facebook with us this evening. I have my good friend Kenny Large, uh, evangelist, and uh, so thank you so much, Kenny. I appreciate you being here with me again. This is uh, I, we had a great time last week. Yes, it we was did. Good. good, good stuff. I love talking about, you know, I just love having conversation about with, I mean, with people that that we can just kind of you know just sharpen each other. The Bible says iron sharpens iron, and so it's good to just sharpen us and hopefully you're getting sharpened a little bit too as you're watching this evening. I believe that as, as you hear some of the things that we're going to discuss this evening, I believe it'll be a blessing to you and I believe it'll be an encouragement to you as well. And really that's the ultimate goal for me at the end of any message, whether it's, you know, a message like the us men you just sharing, or if I'm preaching or, or in an event where, you know, I'm sharing the word of God somewhere. My goal is always to encourage someone. I want them to walk out feeling like that things can change in their life if they need to change. And so we want to jump into this evening. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, forever. Let's talk about eternity. And uh, I know that that's a big topic in a lot of churches. And I know I would suspect from an evangelist perspective, that's, you know, again, of which I'm not. Um, obviously, even though every message that I preach, there's always that flavor of, of evangelist, an evangelistic you know, outcome. Our goal is to see as many people saved as we can, but that's not really my thing in the sense that right. that's something I drive. And I know from an evangelistic standpoint, uh, well, probably, I mean, cause, and you know, reason is that's in your heart to try to get as many people to come to Jesus because of what you have, mm -hmm. and you know, you want them to experience what you have. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and the Lord told me actually a long time ago when when we started the church it's to be uh, seventeen years this uh, this July. Um, the Lord kind of just shared with me, he's like, uh, your anointing, or, you know, and I, and I say the Lord told me, it was just, you just know, you right. sense what God's telling you, you know, the Spirit of God's talking to you, that my anointing was more on teaching people how to live, you know, want, within their Christianity and, and the, the benefits and, and ex the life that you can have and those kind of things. And, and obviously, as a pastor, you're trying to be as well-rounded. You, you, you might know a little bit about it, a few things, not, not a whole lot about it. one thing, you know, but it, it, that is what it is. And so I try to, you know, hit as many areas as I can in people's lives, whereas I know sometimes an evangelist is a little bit more, let's talk about eternity when, well, when it's appropriate. You know, in Ephesians 4, talks about, you know, those five gifts. Yes. And when yeah. you leave one gift out, yeah. what would you do? I don't know if you cook or not. I love mm -hmm. to cook. But when I cook, oh, I might have you over. There you go. I can cook. Ask, ask, ask some people. I can cook. All right. All and right. so, uh, they, if you leave an ingredient out, I'll never forget me and my cousin one time he was out and there's the snowstorm kind of like our weather is right now and we were kind of stuck and his name's Jake and he's a real short guy about six foot eight, uh -huh. and so he said I'd like to have some cookies, and I, so I got looking at the ingredients and said let's uh, let's make some chocolate chip cookies. And so we were going, we didn't have something. And I thought, wow, we don't need that. Well, that chocolate chip cookie didn't do so well. Yeah. So by leaving an ingredient ingredients. out. Good, and so that's what I was telling people all the time, too. You got to make sure you have all the ingredients. Yeah. And just like even last week when we talked about it, you know, people that may be discouraged and don't want to, maybe you tried church before and maybe you think, well, should I try again? You know, give, give God a try. Yeah. And, 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 you know, maybe the ingredients weren't all there the yeah, first time. That's great. You know, so maybe some things. So that we're going to get into this and yeah. I'll let you, you got some yeah. scriptures here and I do as well. And we'll have a good time today. And I appreciate you having me back on here hey, today. It's my pleasure, man. I'm, I'm honored that you're here with me. So let's talk about this a little bit. We're talking about eternity. And I, I was thinking about, uh, I wanted to open up kind of with, in, uh, with uh, Luke chapter 16. It's talking about the rich man and Lazarus that was the beggar at his uh, gate who begged daily and, Lazarus died, and then the rich man died, and so they're they're both you know in a in a in a place that's after their earth, earthly life, and so we know that story, and I'm sure the the audience knows that story as well. That the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell, it says, and so that tells me that hell is a real place. Right. Um, and I would even say this, people. I know there's discussion about is hell a literal fire and all that, and people get all tore up about that. And I do believe it is that. I have enough scripture, but but let me just say this: I don't believe that's really the thing that makes hell hell. Even though I do believe in a, a literal fire, the thing that makes hell hell is when you come to the knowledge that you are forever separated from your Creator, 
that to me is the biggest tale, and, and no way back. No, no way back. To me, that, that is the real description of hell, is knowing that I am forever removed from the presence of God, and I never get to feel love. I never get to feel compassion. I never get to feel forgiveness. I never get to feel all the things that the I get. The good things of God. The good, yeah, yeah, I don't get that. All right. I get is misery. Right. And so that coupled with, with the torment and so forth. But anyway, so he lifts up his eyes in hell and looks across this great gulf. And there's Abraham. He recognizes Abraham. And Lazarus is, is embracing Abraham. And he says, send Lazarus that he could touch his finger to the water and touch it to my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. And uh, Abraham tells him, he said, essentially, we can't do can't it. Do that. Can't right. do it. This is, the, this is forever. Right. He gives us the indication that this is what's occurred is unfixable at that point. That's why the decisions have to be now. And I think, Kenny, many people make it very difficult to be saved. And, I, and I'll, I'll just go on, on record in saying I oppose that kind of thinking. I do, too. It's like... And, and you know, you've probably been in churches like this. I know I have, where there was a condemnation of, of certain people. They would come in, whether they would be, you know, they would have the wrong dress, uh, wrong attire, long hair, maybe tattoos or whatever. And, and I'm not, you know, I don't care about any of that stuff, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm like, I tease with my wife all the time. I'm, uh, you know, I see people that have this great hair. <laughs> And then they've got like ponytails, and it just looks great on certain people, you know. I mean, guys. Yep. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, I wish I could grow a ponytail. <laughs> you know, I wish I could make it look right. And, uh, but, but it just isn't in the cards for me. But I don't have any objection to things like that. And it's like I think we've left people out, and we've put so many rules and regimented things to where we've left people out and we've condemned them to where they don't want no part of church because that's what they associate with church. Well, you know, that's one of the things I, you know, when we first started attending here that I loved, you know, and uh, if you want to wear a suit and tie, wear a suit and tie. I, I com feel comfortable in my jeans, Absolutely. my boots, my button-up shirt. Most churches I preach at now, that's the way it is. Yeah. You know, so for a long, and I'll never forget this story here. A friend of mine locally here called me and was uh, crying, upset, just had found out they had cancer. Mm. And, and I prayed with them on the phone, of course. And, and she, she said this exact same. Her hair was falling out. And she said, what am I going to do about my hair falling out? And as soon as I hung up after praying for her, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, grow your hair out and donate hair. Well, I grew long hair. We can, can you think yeah. about the stuff that people come against me yeah. as an evangelist and I show up in long hair? And I'll never forget, I went to a church, a friend of ours, I know, I'm going to say on there, and one of the ladies come up and said, don't you worry about what anybody else says about your hair. Your heart's right in it. Mm -hmm. But I do like long hair. My wife don't like me to grow long hair. <laughs> she wants me to keep it like this. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, Joe Mock, when I first came here, he said, I looked over and he said, I couldn't, uh, he said, I just look, he said, I wish I had hair like you. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think Can you grow a ponytail? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. But I mean, that is exactly right, because people are judgmental, I think, a judgmental spirit. And when Pastor Jason was preaching, um, what, two weeks Couple. ago? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was sitting there, and he was preaching, doing his, his thing, and loved Pastor Jason. Yeah. And, and I, told, I text him afterwards, man, I got such a good thought. Mm -hmm. That why does other Christians think you have to get all in other people's business? Mm -hmm. And even Jesus, remember when his disciples came to him and said, hey, they're over here doing this, and they're out over here casting things out in your name. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we go take care of them? Yeah. And then what's Jesus do? He said, mm -hmm. Are they really bothering us? Yeah. yeah. Just leave them alone. Just let them do their thing. You know? If they're for And us. so the same way, I mean, no matter mm -hmm. what, if we win people to the Lord, no matter, now I don't always agree with everything that other people do too. I'm not one that will do, stand on the street corner and scream. Yeah. Or stand on the street and hold right, the Bible. Right, right. That's not me. Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay. And, you know, I'm okay. I remember, I, I ride a motorcycle. Love going to motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Went to Bike Week several times down to Daytona. Mm -hmm. And I remember going through Bike Week and some guy having a big sign that says, you're, all, you're forever going to hell, and Jesus hates bikers. Oh, my gosh. So the first thing in my mind, like, dude, you probably better be careful because you might make Jesus today quicker than you thought. Yeah, and then you've you know? got to answer for those kind of but, statements. Yeah, but why, why would we even think that? Where does it say that? that in the Bible, kid? Yeah, I've, never read, I've read through this thing many times. I've never seen anything about bikers. Yeah, I've never seen anything about long hair in the sense that uh, you know we have to 
It's got to be, this is the standard, you know, for making everything be right. I, I just think this. I think that when people come in, we have the attitude, let's fix them. Or, or, or better, let me rephrase that. You fix yourself, you get fixed, and you get cleaned up, and then you come in, and then we can accept you in our right. church. And folks, that's not a church. That's, no, a, that's a club. Right. And that's a very dangerous thing. Me, I'm in favor of come as you are, come wherever you are at, because if you're in a place and your life is in torment, or you're in a place of, you know, you have uh, things that are in a mess, you need Jesus. He's the only one that can fix that. And I want you to be able to come in and feel at peace so that you can hear the Word of God. And then, if the Spirit of God, if there's something that needs to be changed, I'll let Him do it. Right. It ain't my, my job to make sure that you've got everything fixed. That's the Holy Spirit's job. My job, your job as ministers, is to share the gospel. And then when the hearers hear the gospel, the Spirit of God will be in that, and He will talk to them. Right. He, he's capable. I just told people when I had long hair, I said, I just want to be like Jesus. He had go. long hair. And, you you know, I've never seen him have a ponytail on pictures I've seen, but I mean, <laughs> well, he did have long hair. Either. I <laughs> haven't know? either, but man, I tell you what, Mylon LeFevre has the best looking ponytail <laughs> of any man I've ever seen. And I'm like, I told Mylon when he was here a few years ago, I'm like, Mylon. I wish I had hair like you. It, that is just too cool. I just love it. So it, we get hung up on all these things, and it's just ridiculous. And, and then we get in the place where we try to, you know, I've used the phrase, and hang in there with me when you hear this. We try to scare the hell out of people. Right. And, and, and that's really what we do. We try to scare them into heaven. And I just am not in favor of that. I don't, I, and now I'm, I am in favor of talking about consequences to decisions. Right. And people think sometimes, well, I didn't, I've not made a decision to follow the devil. But see, folks, when you don't make a decision to follow Jesus, there is no middle ground. There's not like a, a happy medium. You're either in the kingdom of God or you're not. And if you're not, then you're, you're I mean, I'm not saying you're doing devilish things, but you're, you're, you're in a place to where you're not with God. And so we have to make the decisions and, 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 it, you know, and, and choose to follow God or not. And if we don't, then in essence, you have made a decision. So there's consequences to those decisions as we just heard in, in Luke chapter 16. But more than that, what I love, Kenny, is I love to hear and see people uh, you know, find out about the goodness of God. And what I want to do just real quick here, and I have to pull it up on, on my, my phone here. You know, one scripture that you said about this, it says, don't be fooled by those such things for bad company corrupts good character there you go you know that's and it. so i mean there's, there's you know, i mean i have you know we say this as pre preachers all the time that's one of my favorite scriptures then yeah. we have another one but i mean you <laughs> know it is because of the of the company of the the habits the other things like that but some people are trying to be so judgmental but you know think about where you are at yeah think yeah. about what happened to you and you were no different you as a matter of right fact there. james even says if you Mess up one thing of the law, you messed them all up. Yeah, if you fail, and so on you're not going to, you, um, you know, trying to scare people in, you know, into heaven, out of hell. I just don't think that it works. Yeah, here's what the scripture I really love, and I love this how the New Tri Living Translation too. In Romans chapter two, verse four, it says, "Don't you see how wonderful, how wonderfully kind and tolerant and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you?" Question mark. Can't you see that it's His kindness? that is intended to turn you from your sin. Amen. It's like in, in, if we could get that revelation inside of people that it's his goodness, it's his kindness, that is what will actually turn you on, so to speak, to, to walking with God. That's what I believe that the, that the, the task at hand is. And yes, is there a time and an appropriate time to talk about consequences for sure, but my motivation when I'm ministering is to, to present God in a picture to where he is, it, it, it's appealing that there's something about him that makes people want to go, why would I not want to do that? Well, I mean, if, if you're going through something and you're kind of, we use the term, down and out or depressed or whatever the case may be, you don't want to hear someone else come in that's depressed and down and out no. talk to you. You want someone like, hey, this is, you can change. This can change. This can benefit. Your situation the, the, can the change. The scripture I like when he told me this was, is in Titus chapter 3, uh, verse 3. starts, it says, once we, too, means also, 
were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Did we not do that as sinners? For sure. All right. And then look, our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. I mean, we see that in the world today. Yeah. Hate, so yeah. much hate and everything. Yeah. But here's the but, you know, I, I preach a sermon, but God. Mm -hmm. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, it says he saved us not because of righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. His kindness and his love. Right, his kindness. And, and he says he washed away our sins, giving us a new birth, a new life through the Holy Spirit. And it says he generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior because his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence. Yeah. Listen, gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Yeah. That, that's a wonderful passage, Kenny. And the thing that I think people have to realize sometimes is this. Eternity is like looking you in the face. Every day that you're, I mean, it's kind of like as soon as you're born, you begin to die. Right. You know, you, I know you're, grow, you're a baby, but your death is, you're, you're moving towards moving toward the, that, 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 that time journey. of death, mm -hmm. physically speaking. But the thing is, is your spirit, man, was created by God. Every person that's ever lived, ever will live, every, every person that's living right now, the spirit, their spirit on the inside of their body, that spirit was created by God. Yes. God wants that spirit to live with him forever. That's his intention. That's why he sent Jesus. We know that. But whether you make that decision to serve him and live with him forever or you don't, is the determining factor as to where your spirit man will be. It's not like, I know some people think, I wish it was just like I want my life to be over with. So they get depressed they, they, and, and make decisions like maybe commit suicide or, or uh, you know, they're depressed in a state to where they just think that life isn't worth living, <coughs> excuse me, for whatever reason. You know, it could be a bad relationship and people think that there'll never be another person like that person. And I'm like, if you just would wait a month, Right. or two months, or a little bit of time, God will fix that. He will restore that. He will, he will emotionally he cleanse you and heal you. Because um, we forget about that sometimes. We think healing right. is always just a physical thing, but it's not. There's also times that you need emotionally healing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they make decisions, and then they think that their life is just going to, my misery will be over, and so I'm going to do this. Well, actually, your misery just began. Right. Because literally... Right now, it's just kind of like a little warm-up to what it's going to be like. I mean, imagine this. If we're born again, and I'm going to talk about that just in a second, mm -hmm. but if we're born again, we get to live with God forever, Kenny, forever. I mean, and we can't even, our minds can't fathom that because from the moment you're born, you're conditioned to a beginning and an ending. You're born, you die. You get up in the morning, you go to bed at night. You go to work, your work day ends. You know, everything about our lives is, is basically conditioned as beginning and endings. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to fathom no end. It's literally forever. And we look and we see what God has created. The planet is a beautiful planet. I, I'm amazed. I'm one of these guys that I'm like, the thing for me that really convinces me about God is like, I, I'm always, I've always been intrigued with outer space. You know, and I see the world from these pictures, you know, literally just like in the middle of nothing, right. just hanging, just, just hanging there. And it's like, how can you look at that and not know there's God? How do you, how do you, how can you not, how can you see that? Oh, there was a big bang and that, that a big bang that made it that pretty. I heard somebody say one time before, uh, let's go down to the scrapyard and let's set off an explosion and let's go back and look and see if there's a new Lexus there. Right. It ain't going to happen. No. In order to get a, a Cadillac or a Lexus or a nice luxury car, in order to do that, it requires craftsmanship. It requires detail. It requires thought. And to create something so beautiful, even the human being, mm -hmm. so beautiful, it, it had to be the hand of God. And, and we're going to get to experience that in a, in a way that is never going to end. And to me, that's just like, that's amazing. Well, you know, and, and for me, I'm an outdoors guy. I love hunting especially deer hunting, because they'll come November, and I've sat in that tree stand or sat in that blind or sat up against a tree and just look and so quietly and 
I mean, there's nothing moving. There's times and and there's just you see you can see the dew coming. You can see the the fog lift. Uh, I remember two years ago I was uh, texting my grandson and he was hunting on the next hillside over, and he was we were texting each other here, get, seeing anything, seeing, and we were talking about the dew and the beauty and and all at once, you know, all at once I didn't respond for a while and he heard a couple of shots and I got and he then he kept texting me, is that you? Is that you? Is that you? And I said, yeah, that's me, and I got two down, but you know. I'm just looking at the beauty of of, of what God made, the yeah. trees, yeah. you know, and then even though I'm not a big snow guy, I'd much rather be I'm, sunshine. I'm, and, I'm ready to you go know, back to the, the beach, Yeah, man. you're ready to go. But, I mean, but it is beautiful, yeah, you know, sure. and how, you know, how Mother Nature does her thing. But God, when you think about eternity and God and his existence, and once again, eternity in hell. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of comes like this day, what are you going to choose? Yeah. What are you going to choose? Yeah. Are you going to choose the kindness of God? Yeah. Are you going to choose the love of God? And back when we were recording last week, you know, the reason we serve God, number one reason is love. Mm -hmm. He first loved John three sixteen mm -hmm. for God so loved the world. Yeah. He gave his only begotten son. Yeah. But whosoever believeth him shall not perish, shall have what? Everlasting life. How long is everlasting? Forever. Forever. How long is forever? I, I, and, I can't describe and it. And you said, like, I don't know, forever. How, how long is that? You know, and then because uh, we can't comprehend beginning we, and end. We think a hundred years is a lot. And then, and then imagine a thousand. And then imagine 10,000. And then imagine a hundred thousand years. Imagine a million. And, and it's more than that. Right. It just goes on and on and on. And my father in law is 93 years old. And when I visit him where he's at, at the assisted living home, and he tells me many times, Getting old is not worth it. And he's ready to meet Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. his time's not up right now. Yeah. He knows yeah. that. Yeah. But when we think of that, and then lots of people look like 93 years old, you mean I'm going to live to be 93? Yeah. You know? And so um, eternity's a long, yeah. long time. I'm glad you said John chapter 3 because the, I, I want to I read this just a minute. Okay. This, this was so cool. I was thinking about it. So I've been watching the, the show, and some of the people that I know, we got that on our, uh, on our, on our Facebook, uh, or not Facebook, but on our uh on our app for the church where you can download, watch uh, The Chosen. Okay. Okay. So there's this uh, series out called The Chosen, and it's about the life of Jesus. And it's well, very well done. And so yeah. I'm actually into season two now. Okay. And I, and I was thinking about this because it gives a real good description of some of the characters that we see. And there's a lot of ad libs in it because they, you know, it's hard to, you have to make some assumptions about right. certain things. But they were talking about Nicodemus and they had, you know, this guy on that's, you know, plays a part of Nicodemus. And, and I was, so I was thinking about this when I read this yesterday. Let me, let me, let me start there. So, and this is a very familiar passage, but I didn't, I guess I didn't see the connection here until yesterday. Mm -hmm. So in, in John chapter three, verse one, he says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Okay. So there's Nicodemus. There's his character. The same came to Jesus by night, and he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher that's come from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, that we know this scripture, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Obviously, we know the answer to that. He wasn't talking about that. Right. He's talking about the Spirit be born again. And Jesus answered, and he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of Spirit is Spirit. He's still talking to Nicodemus here. See, and I, 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 I didn't notice this before. We jump to John 3.16 because it's like probably the most famous verse in the world. See, that's ball games all the time with yeah, the signs. John 3.16, yeah. right. It right. is the... Yeah. It's the, the determining <laughs> picture of the Bible, right? Right. But who is he talking to yeah. when he said John 3.16? He was talking to Nicodemus, a guy that was intrigued. He's a Pharisee, but he was intrigued with what Jesus was doing. And he recognized that he did come from God because he couldn't do the miracles that he was doing. So he knows he comes from God, but Jesus, this is his response to right. him. So he keeps on. He says, marvel not that I said to you that you must be born again, again, to Nicodemus. The wind blows, and, and uh, you hear the, uh, the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes uh, or where it goes. So it is with everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus, there it is again, answered and said unto him, how can these things be? So he's still in this conversation yeah. how with are Nicodemus. They possible? How's that possible? Yeah. I don't understand. Jesus answers him, and he says, 
You are a master of Israel, and you know all these things, or you know not these things, I'm sorry. Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we don't know, and we testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I told you the earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? He says, you can't even believe about the, the things that I could tell you about heaven because you, you're in the wrong mindset. You're in the natural mindset. All you think about is natural things. And that's why he said, how can a man be born again? Does he enter into his uh, mother's womb again? Because he's yeah. thinking about everything naturally. And Jesus is trying to show him there's another side to this. There's an upside down kingdom. Right. There's another thing to this that you're not seeing. The spiritual side and the spiritual side is the heavenly side. He says, and no man has ascended up to heaven, but he, that he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. He's still talking to Nicodemus here. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he's telling Nicodemus, you must be born again, meaning the spirit man has to be born again. And I just, I, 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 I don't know that I ever saw who he was really talking to in this. He's talking to a Pharisee who was inquiring about, uh, you know, how do you do all these things? How's this thing happen? And he's trying to help him to see, dude, all you have to do is believe in me. Believe that I'm the Son of God, that God raised him from Romans 10, 9, 10. He's, he's telling him this is what has to happen. Your spirit man gets born again by believing that I'm the Christ. Right. And then the last thing I want to say on verse 17 here, he says, for, the son, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. saved. Yes. And he's saying, I'm not interested in killing anyone. I'm not interested in sending anybody to, to hell. I didn't come down here for the purpose of sending anybody to hell. I came down here, you're already on your way to hell. Right. That's a reality. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're already, you were born to die to go to hell because sin came into the world through Adam. Mm -hmm. And therefore it, passed into, it, it passes to every man. And it's always the seed of man that does it. It's not women, but, but when we have a, a daughter, you, the seed of man is passed into a daughter and therefore the seed of sin is, is passed into them. So sin is prevalent in the world and everybody's life. And Jesus is saying, you're all already condemned to hell. But I came that you might not have to be condemned. And I, to me, I just love that, Kenny. I, I love the heart of Jesus that he shows how much he does not want you to have to experience what we would have had to experience had it not been for his desire to come back and do what he did, hang on the right. cross and, and be raised again from the dead so that we could be justified in the sight of God. Right. I just, to me, I just love that. It just shows me the heart of God the Father to send Jesus and the heart of Jesus to be willing to be sent. You know, I mean, Sunday morning when you were preaching, you said that you had never seen, it wasn't this scripture or another scripture, you was pre using Sunday and said, well, who is, who is he talking to? You know, who is he talking to? And, I, and for me, as an evangelist traveling around different churches, um, you know, not every week, um, but when I have opportunities to go, I love when people have themes like this, like like where you're all having upside down kingdom. We, I'm, I'm putting mm -hmm. myself in with yeah. it, you guys. Yeah, now, yeah, okay? yeah, you are. So when we are, I'm, when I'm here, and and I hear upside down kingdom, I'm thinking like, man, where 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 today can I hear upside down how God's different, how how it's different than the world's way than God's way. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to offend anyone, but I mean, a lot of times people today will say, well, someone send a special vibe to me. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's not scriptural. Right, right. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, right. you, I, please don't get mad at me. Nah, I but I mean, you know, just like if you want to, so this is the way I think, you want some, some good heebie-jeebies or some good, no, <laughs> I'd much rather someone pray for me and say, listen, help me get out, help me get to where I need to be. Yeah. Help me get. I don't need your good vibes. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna <laughs> right, save me. Or right, ain't gonna help me. Right. It's you know. And I want someone that's faith. gonna pray in faith and yeah. believe and say, "Hey, we're gonna. You know, this too shall pass. Yeah. This mm -hmm. you're gonna. We're gonna help you and, and encourage people. Show someone kindness again, yeah. love, and when you take compassion, right? That's what will draw them back in. You know, from wherever they're, whatever the the thing where they're at, right. it'll pull them back in because that's the thing that. 
it causes them to be attracted to God anyway. You know, and when, when, you, when you're down and out, like once again, you want someone to help you raise, raise up. Mm-hmm. I got a sermon maybe, and I was thinking about it the other day, so maybe I need to preach it again. Maybe I'll come and preach it here. Yeah. That bounce back. And I gave everybody a little bouncy ball. Remember those bouncy balls oh, we yeah. had and we'd take oh, yeah. them and they'd oh, go yeah. all through the room. Oh, yeah. And then mom would holler like, what are y'all doing in there? Like, we're just bouncing balls. Well, yeah. off the walls and yeah, everywhere. Oh, yeah. And then especially when you had a ceiling fan and hit the ceiling fan and it shoots every which way. And, but I, I, I preached it in Tennessee. I can take you to the church where I was at. And I said, we, every one of us can bounce back. Yeah. But it takes Jesus to help you get there. Yeah. You yeah. know, let's get you out of this. You're going the wrong direction. Yeah. And really, what, what is repentance? Repentance to turn, to turn the complete opposite yeah, direction. 360, or you know? 180, yeah, rather. Right, 360, right, 180. Yeah. And yeah. go the opposite direction. Yeah. You know, and understand that, you know, eternity, those words, eternity, like, you know, like again, how, do I, how can I comprehend that? Eternity. But he's talking to Nicodemus and he says, you know, and then who did Jesus have more trouble with than anybody? Yeah, Pharisees. <laughs> Religious people. Yeah. Listen yeah. to me out there. Yeah. Don't be religious. Uh, Let's have a relationship. Absolutely. Let's say Jesus absolutely. And, and every, and I, and I do this. I mean, it may sound crazy, but every time when I read and I get my Bible, I'll take my Bible and I'll lay it on my head and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me through this. Yeah. Because this is life changing. Yeah. Yes. This is changing. It gives me hope. Yeah. And like, like and, and then, yeah, there's going to be some things that I may not be doing and live up to par. Mm-hmm. And I do that 180 and say, Hey, I'm going to start today. The thing I think we have to uh, recognize, and I know we're, we're just about out of time here, but the thing we have to, it does, this. it does so fast. Yeah. The thing that we have to realize is we're always going to have challenges, and we're always going to be times that we need pick-me-ups. It, that's the purpose of having the right relationships. When you're in a, you know, not just a church, I don't want to make it sound like church is the, the cure-all because I, it isn't really, but but it is a place where you get resources and uh it's a place to where when when you are going through something and somebody else knows that and they're there for you they they can call you up or or visit you and say hey uh everything what just like what you was talking everything's gonna be all right i'm gonna pray for you and i'm and we're gonna believe god and and this thing's gonna turn around this is you know this this thing that you're dealing with is gonna stop you know those are the kind of things because that represents god Right. Anything that's com- with compassion and love and forgiveness and, 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 and inspiration and builds you up, that's what he's talking about in, that, in the fivefold ministry is, t- you know, the different gifts uh, in ministry. They're all set in place for a purpose to build up the saints right. and to get them to the place to where they go out and they're an extension. It's like you're a magnet. You, you know, you, know, you put, put two magnets together and they, how it pulls it together. Well, that's the way we should be with God. And when, when we hear the word of God, it should stick to us, and then it should then we should go out, and then we stick to somebody else, and then they stick to somebody else, and it just continues on. Because essentially, in the kingdom of God, God wants our lives blessed right now, but he ultimately wants us to know this is just a prelude. This is just a taste. This is just a get you ready. This is like the warm-up. Right. I mean, this is getting us ready for the, what's real. And when we get to heaven, I, I, Kenny, I'm telling you, and I'm not like ready to go there tomorrow, okay, because I want to fulfill. I want to be able to look back like the Apostle Paul said, and when he said, look, you know, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith, and I finished my course. I want to be able to say that and know that, hey, I've done what I believe that God called me to do, and I fulfilled my purpose, and now I'm ready to go see all of the the magnificent stuff that he's got for me. I mean, before we go, I just felt that the Lord brought this scripture mm-hmm. to me <clears throat> in Jude. There's only one chapter, and it says, but you, dear friends, he says this, must build each other up in the most holy faith. Yeah. Build, build, let's build some people up. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. who will bring you eternal life. Mm-hmm. And then look at this. In this way, you will keep yourselves safe in God's love, yeah, you know, and I, and there's other scriptures as you read them. It talks about rescuing others by snatching them out of the flame. And, and I'll go ahead and read it. And yeah. you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Verse 23: Rescue others by snatching them from the flame of judgment. Show mercy to look to still others, but do so with a great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their life. Yeah, I mean, hate I just, the sin, 
Love the Sabbath. Right, and then, and then it goes on to say, Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling and bring you to a great joy in this gracious presence without a single fault. Yeah. And listen to me, if you're out there, Kingsway Church is a place for you to come and get yeah. this. Praise God. I mean, I, I've been coming here for a while, and we talked about coming. Pastor Jason, me and him has been good friends for a long time and about coming, and, and I'm you know, kind of, I say, use the term, bit the bullet, not, not, not that, but I mean, mm -hmm. we just no, weren't happy where we were at before, and I know we are sent to be here, me and my yeah. wife, and listen, Jesus is the way. Yeah. He's the truth. He's the life. And if you want to make eternity with him, he's the way to do that. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And uh, I want to invite you to come out uh, to Kingsway Church. We're here every Sunday morning at 1030. And uh, folks, I believe that when you come in, the minute that you walk through the door, uh, I, our goal is that, that you'd feel right at home and that you'd feel loved the minute that you come in. We, we make no uh, uh, qualifications in the sense of trying to, uh, to, we want this one, don't want that one. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. We love people and we want to see people come into the knowledge of not only God's saving grace to get them to a place of salvation, but we want to see people just come to, to know Jesus and live for Jesus and recognize what a wonderful way and what a wonderful lifestyle that, that he has for you. And so we'll love on you and make you feel right at home. And I believe that you'll hear wonderful worship and, and, and I believe awesome preaching and teaching from a variety of different people that, that come in throughout the year at, at our church here. So we invite you to come out and be a part of that. We'd love to see you. And until we get back to be able to be with you next time, uh, we're just going to pray and dismiss you and let you go out and spend the rest of your evening, enjoy the rest of your evening. Kenny, would you pray yeah. and, and dismiss everybody? Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful word that you've given us today. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word. And Lord, I just pray right now for anyone that may be listening today, that if, Lord, that they're down and out, if they're going through some difficult times, I just pray, Lord, you touch them where they're at. Lord, if there's someone there that does not know you as their personal Savior, Lord, they will call on you right now where they're at. It's very simple. Say, Lord, I've sinned. I'm coming to you. and I'm making you my Lord and my Savior, my Master. And, Lord, I'm going to do that turnaround that we spoke about today. And, Lord, I'm going to make you Lord in my life. And I just pray right now that everyone with there would just sense the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for them to have a great week this week, continue this week, and until we come and to church or wherever, if they come to Kingsway Church, that's wonderful. If they go to another church, that's wonderful as well, that they'll be supportive of their church. And, Lord, not only that, but the kingdom of God. Yeah. Lord, help us be and help us live in the upside-down kingdom like Pastor Phil and Jason and every, all the, Pastor Wells preaching to us, living it the way Jesus wants us to live it. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Wednesday. Amen.